Uh, there we are. Wonderful. Okay. So, last I left off, I was talking to CW over here, and he was telling me that I needed to, uh, in his own words, be like, like, you gotta take that shield down, partner. So, we need to figure out, uh, I guess I went up over to this thing, and I manipulated some stuff over there, and then I got stuck. But there's a bunch of other, like, power plants and things like that in the area that I need to check out and see if I've missed some details there. Like, I didn't actually explore this situation up over... where is it? If I keep going up here, this is basically where I started the game. And I didn't see, like, this section of the game whatsoever. But apparently, there's, like, a little, like, ranch house over here, which is where uh, Farley lives. In the community center. Also, I can totally commit a federal crime here. Watch it. Ready for this? Ready, ready for this uh, felony here? Boom! Felony committed. I'm gonna read somebody else's mail. Uh, okay, this is a letter by CW. To Caroline, it's been five days and not a soul has returned. I'm inclined to believe that things are not going well. Yet surprisingly, I still I am still alive, and that both supremely perplexes me and gives me a portion of hope. I have returned to my vault for protection and to contemplate my options. So I assume uh, that when you enter the game, the very first thing that you're supposed to do is be like, "Why is there a house over here? Let's go check it out." And then you read that letter, and you're like, "Oh, I need to go to talk to CW and see what that's all about." Not in bird's life. I apparently just walked entirely past all this crap. Let's see, is this door openable? Of course it is not. Well, I will continue to explore it a little bit anyway. It's very, very interesting and cool looking to me that there's like this weird like edge to like the lawn. And uh, if you step off this lawn, it just enters like this weird death zone. That is really, really neat looking. I love how this world just kind of seems like it was chopped up just diced up and then strewn about like a bunch of onions on top of a wonderful, like, game, game taco. And uh, <laughs> I get to experience all of it. I'm really looking forward to exploring a couple of the other worlds, too, because uh, if they're as pretty as this one is, like, this is going to be a real, real nice game. I feel like in general, uh, this is probably going to end with uh, one of those invisible walls, isn't it? Yep. Okay, well, whatever. I feel like, in general, the Myst series has prided itself quite a bit on their art designs, though. Like, I remember in the original Myst, just, like, so many wonderful worlds to explore. And I'm really happy to see that this game has continued that. Uh, of course, uh, this game is just words. Yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely a lot of words, because it's not like there's characters or enemies or anything like that to really worry about. I am actually very happy to see that they are sticking to what they know works here, you know, and they're they're making it um, not like a violent game, not like a particularly, I guess, a story-heavy game, and they're just kind of letting it, letting it be, you know, like they're just letting the puzzles be the main focus of the game. All right, so I didn't explore up in this direction at all, so let's go ahead and pop up here and see what this is all about. We have, uh, the tree, and I came to this junction earlier and could go no further, so I, this is all brand new territory for me. It looks like I could have gone over here and manipulated some stuff, which is very unfortunate that I didn't do that, because it's probably required that I do that to continue in this area. But for now, I'm just going to explore a little bit of the mechanics here and see what they're all about. We have a Porticullus with a thing that is too small for me to read behind it. And we have a door, which I can't open from this side, which has been a particularly common theme about all of this nonsense. So this is why this thing's called the trees, because there's apparently a tree there. Well, uh, I will say that they at least named things in a very matter-of-fact, matter-of-fact manner. Uh, Hi, Bert, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm just glad that I was able to get this game to work again. Let's see... I'm gonna take some time to... Where does that go? That power line goes there. 
I'm gonna take some time to go over the uh, over to the to the where that laser beam is coming from, and go check out the railroad tracks that lead up there and see that thing that I missed on the left uh, over by the water cooler, because I think that that might be some element to progressing in this puzzle. The other thing that I think I'm missing is that I still don't quite understand how the levers they're just kind of strewn about the entire level work yet. So I need to start looking for any sort of clues or connections between those levers and, like, the surrounding environment to see if there's just some things that I missed. Like, if there's power lines that are going to the levers or things nearby the levers... Oh, those just control train track junctions. Ah, so there's going to be a minecart that needs to go around at some point, I believe. For now, we're going we're gonna to turn this thing... Okay, so I turned the water off. Let's turn the water on. Maybe I did leave this on. I don't really remember. And that's something I definitely want to get my hands on. I definitely want to get on, get some train technology. It looks like this thing will pull this section of railroad and then place it somewhere. Or perhaps I will control where that section gets placed. At any rate... I'm gonna start looking at some levers, I think. Well, I'm gonna, well, since I'm in the area, I'm gonna talk to CW again real quick and see if he has any clues for me. And then I'm going to, uh, start playing with the levers and walk along the mine tracks and see what they, what sort of connections I can start to find between them. Like, if I pull this lever, let's see, does the train track, uh, change? Sides, Not in any way that's visible to me, honestly. Maybe I just need to pay attention. It looks like... Right... Yeah, I can't... I can't figure out visually, like, what is connected to what when I look at this thing. That's very, very strange to me. What kind of game is this? This is a puzzle game. A particularly interesting one, which is mostly based off of environmental observation. And, like, a lot of, like, lateral thinking. The red beam, you damn fool. Shoot the red beam device. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, I need to take that thing that's shooting the blue laser. And I need to shoot the red laser with it, I think. Or, I'll turn... Wait, what? Okay, I don't got it. I don't got it. I'm sorry, CW. I'm sorry, CW. But... I think that he wants me to be in this area, and he wants me to do stuff with, like, these things. So, if I... Do I have a way of manipulating this, like, mechanism here? I think that I might have something, yes. Ah, okay, that's a, that's a good. That's really, really good. So that thing is going down. And now, oh, it's on the mine tracks. It's on the mine tracks. Okay, this is promising. And then I can enter. Okay, cool. Let's see. So I have a screen here. I have a really, really, really cool looking screen here. Very nice. And, and then I can turn the beam device on and off such, uh, like that way. Oh, cool! I can also manipulate where it's aiming by pulling on the joystick. Fantastic, fantastic. There's also what appears to be some sort of thing on the right side of my screen. Uh, is that the... By any chance, I'm wondering if that will allow me to move the... Move the, the, the device forwards and backwards along the track. I don't know. If I come over here... Yeah, I need to move this thing forwards to, like, here, and then I can shoot the red beam device, so to speak. Uh, or, alternatively, I'm gonna try and pull this lever and see if that does anything. Nope. Okay, well, it's still... I, I, I know a little bit more about what, it, what I need to do. So that's uh, definitely some progress there. I just wish that there was a way... Okay, cool. 
I can move this forwards or backwards or not at all. All right, if I enter this. Okay, so I'm able to click on that thing, but, but I can't like really, I can move it, uh, like if I'm moving my mouse, like forward and backwards and it doesn't, it doesn't work. So not really too sure what that's all about. Like I'm moving my mouse in every single direction here. And I can't manipulate this little lever at all. All right, let me get back in and see if there's maybe some sort of, maybe there's like a switch that can flick to like turn this thing on via the engine, maybe. All right, if I have this thing cranked up, I can control aiming with this lever. And, but I can't, I can't manipulate my camera over there to see that thing. Well, uh, worst comes to worst. I just asked CW for more help. So let's go, let's go over and see what he's up to still. He's probably just gonna be like, Red Bame! Take out the gosh dang it, darn dag nubbit, razzmatazz, Red Bame. I'm on my own. Uh, I need a power source for the car. It's a thought. Could work. Oh! What is this? Is that... That has to do something, right? There's like a little green lever. Uh, nope. I can't manipulate that device at all. Can't manipulate this. Um, hmm. Can I turn the, do I need to turn the engine on somehow? I don't see any buttons on the engine. Okay, I'm gonna get back in, I guess. All right, I'm looking at the battery. Do I flick this thing on when I'm inside of the car? Okay. Ah, I finally figured it out. So you have to flick this thing. The battery can... Oh, the battery can only power either the engine or the laser beam at any given time. So I had... Uh, I was draining my battery too much to be able to uh, hit the... Hit, uh, hit the... Uh, do the, do the um, engine and move. 